everyone. Um, we're on our second lesson in functions. It's, we're going to talk about intercepts, behavior, and extrema points. Our essential question is how do I find the intercepts, extrema points, and explain the asked for behavior? Our first problem says um, below is the graph of g of x. Find the following. So first they want me to find g of 0. Remember that this is my x. So the 0 is my x. I'm going to go on my x-axis to zero, and then I want to find the graph, what the value of y is at zero. So here's x at zero. I'm going to go up to my graph, which is here, and y equals four. And that's it. I'm done. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next one. The next one says um, g of negative two. So that means x is negative two right here. So what is my y? Well, right there, my y is zero. And then the third one says x of g of three. So x equals three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to go up. I'm going to draw my line up or attempt to draw my line up here. Um, straight up, 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 up. And y equals 10. Okay, there we go. So um, before I go on to the next problem, I'm just going to kind of erase my marks on here so um, we can, maybe, maybe I'm going to erase my marks. There we go. Got to get the right eraser. Okay, and now we can mark it all up again. Uh, so the second one says, um, I want to find my Y. I'm sorry, I want to find my x, I need to find x, when y equals 0, because g of x is just y, right? So this is just y, y, y equals 0. So what is x when y equals 0? So what is x equal? So where's y equals 0? Here is y equals 0. Where does it intersect? Which x is where? Which x is y equals 0? get ahead of myself. So I've got three points. I've got here, here, and here. So x is going to equal negative 2, 1, and 2. Three different values. Okay, negative 2, 1, and 2. Great. I can have more than one value for x. Um, and then the next one says, what does the next one say? Um, y is 6. So this time at 6, I'm going to draw a line, ooh, if I can draw a straight line at x equals 6 here. So the first one, I want to know what x equals. Well, the first one is negative 1. And the second one right here is approximately 2 and 2 thirds. Yeah. Um, and the next one, uh, the, so the next question says, um, or part C, the zeros are my x-intercepts. So where are my x-intercepts? So once again, I'm going to erase this so we can uh, actually read the graph here. So here we go. So where are my x-intercepts? X-intercepts are where they cross the x-axis, right? So they're written as a point because it's an x-intercept. So my point, my x-intercepts are negative 2, 0, right? Right here right here and right here. So negative 2, 0, 1, 0, and 2, 0. Okay? And then the part D says, um, what are my, what's my y-intercept? The y-intercept is where it intersects the y-axis. And again, it is a point, and that point is 0, Four. There should only ever be one intercept if it's a function. So one y-intercept if it's a function. Um, part E says the relative maximum. So relative maximum means it's the maximum in that area. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, the total maximum or the... Um, the absolute maximum, relative maximum, is the maximum in that area. So um, in this area, I have a relative maximum. This is my absolute maximum. That's the highest it's ever going to be. So it's not a relative maximum. 
it's a slight difference, but this is in this area, this point is my highest. This is my absolute maximum. It didn't ask for my absolute maximum. It asked for my relative maximum. So relative maximum is in this area of these points, this is my highest point or relative maximum. So that point, this is also a point, and this point is negative one, six. I almost messed that one up. Negative one, six. Okay, so then again, the next question, uh, F asked the, almost the same question, yes? It says, what's a relative minimum? And again, it's in this area. Where is the lowest point in this area? Okay, so my y-axis is our counting by twos here. So I'm gonna say that's negative one and so it's negative one, and it's halfway between one and two, so 1.5. Great. Okay. Actually, I think I got that backwards. Wow, I'm doing good today. Sorry, I was reading my notes. I messed that up. Um, so I am 1.5 and negative one. Okay, awesome. Whew. My domain. So now we're gonna look at my high, my endpoints. I have an arrow on, down here, and I have a solid point up here. So no arrow, it doesn't go higher or further to the right on this one. Sorry, I had to put out my hand. Further to the right and it doesn't go higher. So I always start with my lowest point. So I'm gonna start on this side. So my domain is uh, gonna get go further to the left, even though it's gonna go slowly further to the left. It is gonna finally get to negative infinity. Um, so negative infinity, my domain goes from negative infinity to where? What is this point here? Well, this point is three, and is three included or not included? Well, since it has a solid dot, that means it is included. Awesome. And then my range goes, again, from my lowest to my highest. Well, and again, since this is an arrow and it's gonna keep going further down, it's gonna go from negative infinity to my highest point, which is 10. And since it has a solid dot, it is included. Good job, you guys. So we're gonna go to the next problem, problem two here. And problem two says, um, find the domain and range of each function below. Assume both ends have arrows if no markings. Okay, so that means that this, especially the last part here, means that um, there's arrows on the end of this graph and this graph, okay? So it's gonna keep going up and further to the left and up and further to the right. Um, so domain and range. So my domain, and because it's a graph, I can use interval notation, which is awesome. Um, so my smallest uh, domain would be negative infinity. Now notice that there's a break in be here, between here. I cannot use, I cannot go between negative one and positive one. So there's gotta be a break in my domain. So my domain is gonna go from negative infinity all the way to, oh, let's go this way. All the, negative infinity all the way to negative one. And since that's a solid dot, it is included. And then I'm gonna join that with it starts up again at one, which is included because it's a solid dot, and it's gonna keep going to infinity, which is not included. So that's my domain. And then my range, the break in my domain does not affect my range because there's no break in my range. Um, my range, my range is my lowest range is here, and then it just keep go, keeps going up. So it starts at zero, and continues to go to infinity, which is not included. Good job, you guys. So my last one, again, it's gonna say, we're gonna assume it has arrows on the end. Okay, that one kinda looks like there's a little arrow on the end. And if we look at this point right here, this line right here, 
This one is solid, this one is open. So there's, my domain does not break there. It's still continuous. So I have arrows on the end. It's gonna keep getting wider and wider. So my domain is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now my range is a different story. My arrows are all going down. So my range is gonna go from negative infinity. And where does it stop at? Well, it stops here. This is my highest point on my graph, right here. So my range goes from negative infinity to one. And since that's a solid dot, it is included. And so that's how we're gonna find domain and range, uh, my extrema points, um, which is my minimum and maximum. And, and how to describe my what they're asking me to find, which is my minimum, maximum, domain, range, intercepts, all that stuff. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. We're going to go over some more of this in class. Uh, talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.